Hello chess friends and welcome to Yazar of Chess Channel and welcome back to our Catalan opening studies. So in this studies we'll see this beautiful opening analyzed for both sides. So we'll see the most important strategic ideas for white. We'll see also the most important strategic, uh, strategic ideas for black. We'll see the most important middle game strategies that can happen for both sides. We'll see cool tactical ideas but also beautiful opening traps. So in my opinion it will be really one of the most important series here on my YouTube chess channel. And if you're interested more into the Catalan uh, opening please check out our series from the beginning because we have analyzed so far our introduction video we have seen also uh, the most important problems of the Catalan we have seen cool opening traps so far also uh, different possibilities so as I said please watch it always uh, this series here on my YouTube chess channel from the beginning because maybe we'll miss something in this particular video that I wanted to show you today so today we'll do a different subject today we're discussing about a huge problem that can happen in the Catalan opening which will be now this C file attack basically in one particular moment white can actually go uh, with this line c takes d5 and you can say now dude what you're talking about why should we discuss just one move uh, what's so special about c takes d5 actually notice for instance in this typical position of the catalan opening after c takes d5 the c file will get opened with the support of the bishop on f4 uh, there are always always tactical problems here for black around the square c7 and notice also in the continuation of the game white will probably continue with ideas of rook to c1 so will he, he will support the c file attack so i think it's a common uh, problem for black in the catalan opening so you have to know this this kind of theory if you don't know what to do if you don't know how to react here properly as black i think you could get destroyed so now in the next couple of videos we're going to discuss as i said this c file attack so we are starting now uh, this studies of the c file attack with a beautiful game played by ding Liren against uh, Veselin topalov will not only analyze uh, their game will also of course um, study here different sidelines but i think um, this game is really special between ding Liren and um, uh, Veselin topalov because ding introduced to us really a beautiful new idea in the katan opening that i've never seen before at least i couldn't find any other games that have been played in this particular line that i wanted to show you it's a beautiful idea by ding Liren because many times there is a certain drawish line it seems that there has to be a perpetual solution of the game basically white doesn't want to retreat with the bishop for instance in this position a similar position for instance after a couple more moves uh, here for rook to c1 notice many times the knight is attacking the bishop then bishop retreats then the knight retreats and many times this uh, position has been evaluated as a perpetual drawish position but ding will introduce to us really a beautiful new idea he will stay active with his bishop and go aggressively into the game so that's why i think this game between ding and the topalo should be really your cornerstone in your preparation if you prepare as white if you prepare as black, as black it doesn't matter but this game i think has to be your foundation in order to make further progress in the c file attacks of the katan opening so let's start now from the game from the beginning because i don't like to of course keep immediately to this position i wanted to just point you out now what's our uh, su subject today but as i said let's see now the opening from the beginning uh, beginning and then we'll see some beautiful opening lines here in the katan opening and then of course we'll follow this beautiful game played by dingling and and Veslin Topal. So the first move of the Catalan is of course the move d4. Black response was knight to f6. We're playing c4 after e6, knight to f3, d5, and now this is the um thematic move of the Catalan. It's of course the move g3. We're playing the Fianchetto instead of moves like knight to c3 or uh bishop to f4, bishop to g5. So we are playing immediately the aggressive Fianchetto. So we'll discuss in the continuation of our series also the open defenses with the d takes c4 immediately. But as I said, so far we're analyzing now this particular line after move g3. We have discussed so far here on my YouTube chess channel this bishop to b4 variation. Now my recommendation is also to go with bishop to d2. So we have discussed why is it uh, important to play bishop to d2 instead of knight to d2. So as I said in our previous videos, we have discussed different variations after bishop to b4. So now from bishop to d2, bishop to e7, bishop to g2 is now white's continuation. Kingside casting, kingside casting, knight from b to d7. And now we are playing here from white's perspective, the move queen to c2. We are connecting now the queen to the pawn on c4. If d takes c4 happens, then of course the queen will simply recapture the pawn. And then of course this long diagonal for the light for bishop will be liberated so now black goes 
many times into this semi-slav structures with move c6 d5 e6 builds a really solid structure but of course we have discussed it also here so far in our studies that the downside is the bad bishop on c8 now here comes the tricky part we are playing bishop to f4 and basically in my opinion there are two ways how white is going to make progress before this move bishop to f4 he will try the c file attack or he'll try the d file attack i think if your opponent plays the move rook to d1 immediately then he's announcing the d file attack so we have discussed it already so as i said if your opponent plays rook to d1 then you can expect that he's trying to get the d file open but now with moves like knight to e5 bishop to f4 or c takes d5 or even rook to c1 he is going to discuss um, uh, some c file methods so he is going to try some ideas of the c file attack so now with the move bishop to f4 and that was also ding learns continuation against veslin topalov we have already a tensed position because now the bishop gets activated both bishops are very very active here the knight can also jump now on e5 because the bishop on f4 is supporting uh, the e5 square now maybe with rook to c1 we can expect maybe c takes d5 d5 also afterwards but as i said it's already already an aggressive method by white so now black continues with the usual b b6 move it seems strange but actually this move has to be played in my opinion it's still the best move here for black because later black can develop with bishop to b6 uh, b7 or with bishop to a6 both moves are playable i think in the katan opening so now comes the tricky part now we have reached the position from the beginning of the video c takes d5 and you can say no this is nothing special you just traded the pawn okay you're opening up the c file but this move has to be discussed many times you will get destroyed if you don't react correctly because after c takes d5 ding continued now with the move rook to c1 and notice there is now a huge weakness around the square c7 now my recommendation for black is here to play bishop to a6 this move bishop to a6 comes with the idea that we're trying to play knight to h5 then when the bishop retreats to d2 the queen is disconnected from the pawn on e2 so now with the move bishop to a6 we are targeting uh let's flip the board here a little bit to the game from black's perspective we are targeting also the pawn on e2 so also what we're doing we are controlling many times the square b5 many times uh white is trying to go knight to c3 knight to b5 then of course from the square b5 there is another pressure uh, around the square c7 so now we have to be careful what we're doing from black's perspective in my opinion bishop to a6 is really one of the best methods how to meet this idea so far so now a uh, knight to c3 played by ding Liren, normal development and also with the preparation to play the move e4 liberating now also the long diagonal for the light square bishop now knight to h5 and you see now this is now the crucial moment it's not a moment that wins the game or something for white but i think this is a beautiful idea that Ding Lerden will show us here. So after move knight to h5, many times this line has been discussed and white retreats, then black plays knight to f6, bishop to f4 happens again, again knight to h5, and many times players even agree to a draw because this position is supposed to be sort of a drawish line. But now Ding introduced to us really, really a beautiful new method, which I think you can apply here as white. I'm not saying black is winning because white will play a certain type of moves but in my opinion this is must know theory now from from this point on so ding goes with the aggressive bishop to e5 and there is already already a dirty idea about this move because if you play now knight takes e5 the problem is now we will play d takes e5 we are locking out the knight in order to keep some kind of a chance with the knight you have to play now g6 you have to weaken the pawn structure because okay maybe with the move g4 the knight still has opportunities to jump on f4 but with queen to d2 g4 the knight could be actually trapped so what black needs to be careful so that's why black goes many times with the move g6 uh, is trying to retreat here to g7 but now uh, comes the aggressive method e4 all of these are double pawns but these are mobile pawns and if you maybe step um, if you maybe continue here with d4 rook to d1 is going to happen and you will lose a pawn if you for instance play something like d takes e4 here then the knight or the queen is coming into the game with a beautiful tempo also knight to e4 is perfectly fine here targeting the f6 square targeting the d6 square this is beautiful beautiful theory of here for white so let's go back after move bishop to e5 the ding played here 
which is really really a beautiful method you cannot actually here pick up the bishop immediately what you can do and it's quite quite risky uh, you can play of course here the move f6 it seems tempting but it leads now into a wild aggressive line so I'm sure really that Ding has somewhere this line studied at home because no one would play probably bishop to e5 because the bishop gets a little bit endangered by all of these activities, by the knight's attack, by this attack of this other knight, by the pawn activity. Look what happens actually after move f6. There is one game in the database in which white played the move queen to a4 and black continued with f takes e5. Uh, now after queen to a uh, a6 here still white should be much much better because of the weakened pawn structure you can maybe try something like i don't know maybe d takes uh, e takes d4 knight to d4 but the e6 square is weak now still the bishop is very good knight to b5 knight to c7 our opportunity so in my opinion with this beautiful central control uh with the minor pieces i think black has already already huge problems but of course after move uh, queen to a4 white can be maybe challenged with this move. Black doesn't have to, of course, play f takes e5. Can play now bishop to b7. Uh, this wasn't played in the game between Ding Liren and um, and um, Veslin Topalov, but I want to really show you this important study uh, here in this particular line. So, as I said, we're not only following this video, the game between Ding Liren and the Topalov. Uh, this is also something that I've analyzed at home. So now, after move bishop to b7, there is a stunning move, bishop to c7. This is really well because of a queen to c7, now comes the dirty part. Knight to d5 hitting the queen, the queen has to step back. We pick up now the bishop with on e7 with the check. After queen to e7, the rook comes on c7. You see how dangerous, really effective can uh, be this um, um, uh, pardon me, this uh, c file attack can be because when you don't react correctly you can get destroyed in an early stage of the game look at this black has several problems now you can maybe continue with uh here bishop to c8 you're getting out of this mess because you're trying to protect also your bishop but also the knight was hanging here um uh with an attack by the queen and uh and the rook against the knight but now another stunner look at this knight to e5 liberating now the long diagonal for the rook uh for the bishop against the rook you can maybe try to get out of this mess uh, by playing rook to b8 but now you're getting simply destroyed around the squares d7 so you basically didn't do anything here so that's why after move um, the knight to e5 uh, you can play maybe f takes e5 but now after bishop to a8 you can maybe pick up now the spawn but now after move bishop to f3 the knight is still hanging and maybe you retreat here with your knight on f6 but now rook to c1 is going to happen again the bishop is trapped again the bishop doesn't have good squares all of the squares are taken uh, by the bishop's activity, by the rook's activity. We have now the beautiful tension on the c file, bishop to a6. It's not possible. So actually, this is, I think, a very important line that, that you should know. This is possible uh, after we move bishop to e5 that Ding played in the game. Topalov didn't play f6, but if f6 happens, you should not be worried about this move f6 helps you out you play queen to a4 uh, if your opponent retreats as we said then we have this stunner bishop to c7 this is really really stunning so let's go back after bishop to e5 in the game topalov played knight to f6 he um, sensed of course that the knight could be loose a little bit here on the board now in the continuation we have now the move e3 and this is really stunning and this move has never been played in chess history this is now really a theoretical novelty e3 seems like a wild move because it's locking your own bishop and there are maybe opportunities the first thing that i thought about this move e3 is maybe knight to e8 a possibility here it's maybe knight to e8 with f6 an opportunity in my opinion this seemed like a logical idea to maybe somehow attack the bishop further with f6 g5 and similar stuff but actually look at this white can continue with the move h4 here is controlling further g5 and also f6 you can maybe try now f6 white retreats now to um, uh, to f4 but now even if you chase the bishop g5 h6 g5 f6 g5 still we have this square so also we have the square c7 here so it's not possible so instead of this move knight to e8 what you could do is maybe here to move knight to g4 this seems also logical 
maybe to attack the bishop in this way. But again, we have this idea. Queen to a4, you're stepping back to b7. Now we can play bishop to f4. And even if you chase away again the bishop with the uh, g5, we can even take. This is also, I think, something that should be discussed because look at this. After bishop to e5, bishop to e5, knight to e5, queen to e5, queen to d7. We gain the pawn. The king is naked here. We have an active queen. This bishop is still bad here, blocked out by its own pawn structure. So you see, after move e3, knight to g4 or knight to e8 are not working. So this is something that you should know uh, here from White's perspective in the Katan opening. Also, here Topalov didn't play knight to e8 or knight to g4. He played now the move h6. He tried to lock the bishop maybe in a different way, immediately preparing the move uh, here, uh, bishop to, uh, pardon me, the move g5. But now, also what I think should be discussed is now maybe the method of knight to e5. But again, now you don't have to take d takes e5 because there is no threat of trapping the knight. The knight is not on the edge of the board anymore. So that's why this move knight to f6 was very important uh, by Topal. And I'm sorry if I'm complicating things too much, but I think we have to know about this kind of stuff. Uh, so I have move knight to e5. And uh, now white can simply continue with knight to e5 and will support the knight with the move f4 and should still have a good game because of, of good spaces. Also, knight to c6 is a possibility. The c file is still occupied. The bishop is now aiming into nothing. There is no pawn on e2 that uh, the bishop is attacking. So the bishop has lost its purpose uh, on this diagonal. So now, of course, there are several threats again on the c file. So still you see the c file attack is, is, uh, is working here. So after move e3, here Topalov, as we said, played the move h6. Odin continued with queen to, d1, uh, queen to d1. He wanted to liberate the queen. He wanted just to attack now the c file with the rooks. Because if the rook comes on c file, then of course the queen could be exposed here also on c2. So here in the continuation, now uh, finally knight to e5 was played by um Vesely Topalov. We have now knight to e5, bishop to d6, and now we have this method that we have discussed previously, f4. And if you want to take, you can be my guest, bishop to f4, uh, bishop to e5, f takes e5, is supporting simply uh, here the pawn. Uh, there are not so many good squares for the knight. You can play maybe knight to h7, knight to d7, knight to e4 is of course not possible. Knight to g4 is also not possible, so white gets a space advantage. Can maybe also change a little bit the direction of the attack maybe can attack also a little bit here the king side because we have a space advantage here so many opportunities but i think it's simply a one-way ticket here in white's favor so that's why from f4 uh topalo retreated to b7 and tried also to cement his knight on e4 so here in the continuation rook to c2 we have now a6 which creates a little bit weak pawn structure here on the on the queen side we have rook to c1 the normal idea here by uh ding Liren. and you see topalov played i think so far decent game he's controlling all of the squares that the rooks would love of course to occupy maybe you would love to come somehow with the rook on the c file but uh, now the bishops so far are controlling the square so we have queen to e7 connecting the rooks and you see now with the move a6 we have weakened also a little bit the b6 square now after queen to d8 queen to d3 knight to e4 was maybe even the first mistake by Vesely Topalov, maybe rook to b8 was slightly better after something like bishop to f3. We can pick up now the knight and now reroute the knight and defend finally the b6 square. But again, I think here uh, white should be slightly better. Maybe we can also la later play something like bishop to a, um, bishop to a8, maybe push the pawns further here. But at least we're controlling maybe here the c5 square, so still a playable game. But Knight to e4 is a little bit risky because now uh, Ding found this idea. He played knight to c6. We have now bishop to c6, rook to c6, and you see now still the b6 pawn is weak. In the game we had b5 and now knight to c5. A beautiful, stunning idea uh, here by Ding Liren because after knight to c5, d takes c5, Ding created himself here a beautiful passer, which is really, really wild. Incredible idea. The 
position is not so bad for black uh, because these are opposite colored bishops which end many times uh, uh, with the draw but still this pawn is rolling it's hard to stop it because after d takes e5 bishop to e7 look at this e4 liberating now also the long diagonal for the light square bishop we have d takes e4 queen to d8 uh ding simplifies the game goes with the bishop into the game we have rook to uh, a7 rook to c2 g5 and f rook to b6 ding is preparing to push the pawn and now comes another mistake here by um Veselin Topalov. he played rook to d4 he should have probably played here g takes f4 and this should be i think still a draw although this pawn is annoying but i think black can hold this position after g takes f4 look at this you can maybe start to push the pawn but now we create a certain blockade okay you pick up now this pawn we attack now the bishop and now we can later maybe trade off one of these pawns but now if we move b4 look at this everything is compact here everything is glued together so maybe with the support of the king this could be also a solid line for black but after move rook to d4 here ding continues with this beautiful move rook to b7 because after rook takes b7 bishop to b7 there is now clear path uh with the support of the bishop for the pawn we have here bishop to d8 uh, uh, now f takes g5 a move that of course Vesna Topalov should not have allowed because he should have played simply as we said g takes f4 now after h takes g5 there is a certain problem here maybe ding and can also create a pass on the h file which could be also also very dangerous here to handle for for vessel to power bishop to a6 you see all of these pawns are now falling apart we have now the move b4 king to f2 king to g7 king to e3 attacking the rook e5 bishop to d3 controlling the square e4 now after rook to d5 we have now c6 you have to play now first to check after king to e2 you have to play now the blockade now still it's unpleasant here to uh, battle for for black this is a really really annoying pass point to handle in the game g4 beautiful move here by ding Liren. he's controlling uh the square f5 maybe in some lines if black manages to connect somehow these three pawns this could be dangerous so now with the move g4 a good good defensive move here by ding we have rook to d4 rook to c4 rook takes c4 bishop to c4 we have e4 king to e3 bishop to h2 you could maybe try king to f6 here seems tempting but now again the king gets closer again we can create maybe here this uh, pass pawn also on the afl so still i think this should be much much better continuation here for uh for white after king to e3 as we said uh here topalov took bishop takes uh, h2 and now ding simply picked up this one after king to f6 king to d5 the kings are getting closer bishop to d6 look at this this bishop uh is simply stuck here the king is getting now into the support of uh the c7 square this is now completely completely winning king to d8 we have now bishop to f7 all of the pawns are really really falling apart here rook to c8 bishop to e6 king to b8 now bishop to f5 bishop to c7 now ding goes for this pawn we have bishop to e5 and after b3 in this position vesely topalo resigned so what can you do if you play something like king to c7 we will eventually simply pick up this pawn and two connected passers are simply winning the game maybe black can sacrifice the bishop for these two pawns somehow but still there is the problem of the g4 pawn which is protected so this should be still completely completely winning end game here for uh, uh for white so great game by ding let's go back I think the most important here uh, thing about this game is really not the end game the opening stage i it's very very interesting because as we said after bishop to f4 and after this knight to h5 move we can still play bishop to e5 you saw after move knight to e5 d takes e5 was quite quite dangerous so now even if you play after e3 some ideas of knight to g4 knight to e8 you really have to know now the continuations i think this is something that you have to know really uh by heart because even if knight to g4 for instance happens you can still play queen to a uh, a4 very very dangerous bishop to b7 bishop to f4 you hit uh the pawn uh, hit the bishop knight to g5 here happens and now uh, after queen to d7 you see we have a completely completely winning game here so this is our study really beautiful study never seen before introduced by uh ding learn here against veselin topalov amazing amazing theory you see how openings can be also very important in chess if you know your stuff uh, you can get good positions if you don't know your stuff 
you can get destroyed in an early state of the game so brilliant brilliant play here by uh dingler against wesley topal so okay i hope that you enjoyed the studies this um, will be our first study of the sea file attack we will continue with this plans because i think this is very important this will be a long series and maybe you'll say why do you bore me with so many lines with so many ideas because these are very important crucial ideas that have to be discussed i think these are key moments key elements of the katlan opening so this will be as i said really really a long series here on my youtube chat channel so okay uh, see you soon with some more videos if you want to more know more about the katlan opening please check out our study so far here's the link of our playlist and see you soon with some more videos as i said and chess is the best of course